I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the dense, humid jungles of the Amazon basin, a team of wildlife researchers embarked on an expedition to document the biodiversity of a relatively unexplored region near the Rio Negro. The team, led by Dr. Elena Marquez, a herpetologist specializing in large reptiles, and accompanied by two local guides, Marco and Louise, was particularly interested in the potential discovery of unusually large anaconda specimens reported by local tribes. Their journey began at dawn as they navigated the narrow tributaries of the river in a small motorized canoe, the thick canopy casting deep shadows over the murky water. The air was alive with the sounds of the jungle, calls of distant howler monkeys, the occasional splash of a river dolphin, and the incessant buzz of insects. After several hours of travel, the team arrived at a remote lagoon known to the locals as Lago Oculto, or Hidden Lake, reputed for its untouched beauty and the legends surrounding it. The water was dark and still, reflecting the lush greenery and the heavy gray clouds above. As they set up their base camp on the shore, Marco told them about the legend of a giant snake, a sucuri, or anaconda, that the locals believed protected the lake. They called it the Guardian of the Lagoon. Dr. Marquez, while skeptical of legends, was intrigued by the possibility that these stories could be based on encounters with exceptionally large anacondas. Such specimens were known to exist but rarely encountered due to their elusive nature. The next day, equipped with cameras, drones, and measuring equipment, the team ventured around the perimeter of the lagoon. Dr. Marquez instructed Marco to use the drone to survey the area from above, hoping to get a clear view of the water and any potential wildlife activity. As the drone buzzed overhead, sending live footage to their monitor, the murky waters below seemed to stir. Suddenly, the drone's camera captured a brief but unmistakable sight. The sinuous form of an enormous anaconda, gliding just beneath the surface. The snake was unlike any they had documented before. It was colossal, its body thick and powerful, disappearing into the shadowy depths of the lagoon. Excited by the footage, Dr. Marquez decided to take a closer approach to the water's edge, hoping to spot the giant anaconda from a safe distance. She and Louise slowly made their way through the dense underbrush to a clearer vantage point. As they settled in to watch and wait, the serene silence of the lagoon was suddenly broken by a deep, resonant thrumming sound that seemed to vibrate through the air and water alike. The surface of the lagoon began to ripple, and the water bulged unnaturally near the center. Heart racing, Dr. Marquez readied her camera, her hands steady despite the adrenaline surging through her veins. The water's surface broke with a startling ferocity as the giant anaconda emerged, its massive head and several meters of its body visible above the water. Its eyes, dark and glossy, scanned the surroundings, its forked tongue flicking in and out, tasting the air. The creature was majestic and terrifying, a primeval force of nature that commanded the lagoon. As Dr. Marquez captured photo after photo, the snake's gaze seemed to turn towards them, its body coiling beneath the water in preparation for something, either to strike out of curiosity or defense, or to retreat into the depths of its watery domain. The team remained frozen, caught between awe and fear, as the giant anaconda started to move slowly in their direction, its movements creating small waves that lapped at the shore. The story of their encounter with the Guardian of the Lagoon was far from over, and the unfolding events promised to be as harrowing as they were historic. The colossal anaconda, having locked its gaze upon Dr. Marquez and Louise, moved with an eerie grace that belied its massive size. Each ripple in the water was a testament to its power as it edged closer to the shoreline where Elena and Louise stood transfixed. The thrumming sound intensified, now clearly emanating from the anaconda itself, a deep, resonant warning that vibrated through the dense air of the jungle. Elena, while profoundly aware of the danger, was equally captivated by the scientific opportunity unfolding before her. She continued to snap photos, her camera's shutter clicking rapidly, capturing every scale, every flick of the anaconda's tongue, its eyes reflecting a primal intelligence. Louise, on the other hand, was visibly nervous, his eyes darting around, seeking an escape route should the anaconda decide to advance onto the shore. And Marco, who had been monitoring the situation from a safer distance, shouted to them his voice laden with urgency. 
Stay back, he warned, but his advice was barely audible over the humming vibrations emitted by the snake. Dr. Marquez, her mind torn between her professional instincts and the innate human fear of such a formidable predator, slowly began to back away, keeping her eyes on the giant snake. The anaconda paused, its head just meters from the water's edge, and for a moment, it seemed to assess the humans before it. The thrumming stopped abruptly, plunging the lagoon into a heavy silence that was more terrifying than the ominous sound. Suddenly, the anaconda submerged, leaving behind a churning vortex of water. Elena and Louise seized this moment to retreat hastily to where Marco was standing with the rest of their equipment. They watched the water's surface intently, expecting the anaconda to reappear at any moment. Marco equipped himself with a long-range lens and began to help Elena document this encounter, hoping to capture more detailed images of the anaconda's features. As they prepared their cameras, the water bubbled violently and the anaconda's head surfaced again, this time closer to the center of the lagoon. What happened next was extraordinary. The anaconda began to exhibit behaviors none of them had ever witnessed in reptiles. It started to coil its massive body in what appeared to be a deliberate display, raising a significant portion of its body above the water. It then opened its mouth widely, not in aggression, but as if mimicking a call or signal. This behavior was unheard of in scientific literature for anacondas, which are typically solitary and stealthy predators. Dr. Marquez theorized aloud, it might be a form of communication, or perhaps a mating display. This could be a completely undiscovered behavior, unique to giant anacondas. Her voice was full of excitement, mixed with a healthy dose of caution as they continued to observe and document. The snake's display continued for several minutes, and then, as quickly as it had begun, it ceased. The giant anaconda slowly submerged, disappearing once again beneath the dark waters of the lagoon, leaving only rippling waves and an unforgettable sense of wonder in its wake. As night began to fall, the team agreed to set up infrared cameras around the lagoon in hopes of capturing nocturnal activity. The mystery of the anaconda's behavior compelled them to extend their stay, despite the risks involved. With the darkness enveloping the jungle, the sounds of nocturnal creatures filled the air, and the team settled in for a long vigil. The events of the day had opened a new chapter in their research, one filled with questions and the promise of groundbreaking discoveries. However, as the jungle night deepened, they remained on high alert, aware that the giant anaconda could reappear at any time, and the true nature of its interest in them remained an unnerving mystery. As the darkness deepened around Lago Oculto, the team's tension was palpable. The infrared cameras were positioned strategically around the lagoon, each feed transmitting back to the monitors set up in the makeshift camp. Dr. Marquez, Elena, and Marco gathered around the screens, watching the thermal signatures of the jungle life play out in real time. The giant anaconda had disappeared beneath the murky water, but its presence was felt in every rustle and ripple captured on screen. Every so often, Elena would point out the thermal outline of smaller anacondas or other reptiles skirting the edge of the water. But the giant anaconda, the guardian of the lagoon, remained elusive. Time ticked on, and the nocturnal symphony of the Amazon played around them, a constant reminder of the wildness of their surroundings. Marco, ever watchful, suggested they take shifts monitoring the screens so everyone could get some rest, but rest was the last thing on anyone's mind. Around midnight, as Louise took his turn at the watch, a sudden spike in the thermal readings caught his attention. He called out softly, waking the others. They rushed to the monitors and saw a massive heat signature moving through the water toward the center of the lagoon. On screen, the anaconda's body appeared intermittently, segments of it surfacing before submerging again. It was heading towards an area of the lagoon that appeared deeper and cooler than the surrounding waters. A subaquatic cavern or hole, perhaps, that the team had not noticed during the day. Elena speculated, her voice a whisper in the dark. It could be going to a nesting site or maybe it's attracted by something in that area, something we can't see from here. The idea of a nesting site was thrilling, but also brought new concerns. If they were near a nesting site, the anaconda could be more aggressive, more protective. The decision was made to deploy a submersible drone equipped with a camera to follow the anaconda into the deeper water. This was risky. The anaconda could easily damage the drone, 
but the potential scientific rewards were too significant to ignore. Louise carefully maneuvered the drone into the water, guiding it towards the large thermal signature displayed on the monitor. As the drone approached, the anaconda's massive form became clearer on the screen, its body coiling and uncoiling in a display of raw power and grace. Suddenly, the anaconda stopped moving and turned towards the drone. Its eyes, visible even on the thermal camera, seemed to stare directly into the lens, a moment of contact that sent chills down everyone's spine. Then, without warning, it darted forward, its mouth open. The feed from the drone flickered as the anaconda attacked, the screen filling with a chaotic blur of motion, and then static. The connection was lost, the drone, presumably, destroyed. The team was left staring at the blank screen, the silence oppressive. Marco broke the quiet, his voice uneasy. It's protecting something. We should be careful. They all agreed, but the question remained. What was it protecting? And how would its behavior change now that it had been provoked? They decided to maintain surveillance from a safer distance until dawn, and then reassess their strategy. As the first light of morning tinged the sky with gray, the lagoon remained calm, the surface undisturbed except for the occasional fish jumping. But the tranquility was deceptive, and beneath the serene surface, the team knew that a formidable creature lurked, its secrets guarded in the dark waters of the Amazon. The expedition was far from over, and each of them felt the weight of the unknown as they prepared for another day at Lago Oculto where the line between discovery and danger was as thin as the morning mist. As dawn broke over Lago Oculto, the team reconvened, their faces etched with the strain of a sleepless night. The loss of the drone weighed heavily on them, signaling a potential threat they hadn't fully anticipated. Dr. Marquez, determined yet cautious, decided they needed a clearer understanding of the lagoon's underwater topography to continue their research safely. They agreed to use the day to gather as much surface data as possible without provoking further encounters with the giant anaconda. Throughout the morning, Elena and Louise, using less invasive equipment, mapped the periphery of the lagoon. Marco kept watch, his eyes scanning the still waters for any sign of the anaconda. The jungle seemed unusually silent, the normal calls of wildlife subdued, as if the creatures themselves were wary of the giant lurking beneath the lagoon's surface. By late afternoon, the team had compiled a detailed map of the lagoon's edges and shallower parts. However, the deeper central area, where the anaconda had disappeared the night before, remained a mystery. The atmosphere was tense as they discussed their next steps. Dr. Marquez proposed a cautious approach to explore the deeper part of the lagoon using a stronger, cable-attached camera system designed for deep-sea exploration. As they prepared the equipment, the surface of the water in the center of the lagoon began to bubble and churn. The team stopped in their tracks, watching in horror as the water roiled more violently. Without warning, the giant anaconda surged from the depths, its massive body propelling it out of the water like a monstrous apparition. The creature's eyes locked onto the team on shore, its tongue flicking in and out, tasting the air, sensing their fear. With terrifying speed, it moved toward the shore, its intentions unclear, but its aggressive posture unmistakable. Frozen with fear, the team could only watch as the giant snake approached. Dr. Marquez, regaining her senses, shouted for everyone to get back to the vehicle, a command that broke the paralysis gripping them. They turned to run, but the anaconda was faster. Yeah. As they sprinted towards the safety of their camp, the ground beneath them shook with the weight of the advancing anaconda. Its immense body slithered across the ground, blocking their path to the vehicle. Louise, the closest to the creature, stumbled and fell. The anaconda, quick as a strike of lightning, wrapped around him, its constricting body crushing with deadly force. The screams of the team pierced the jungle air, a terrifying symphony that echoed through the trees. Elena and Marco, looking back in horror, saw Louise's struggles cease as the anaconda tightened its grip. Dr. Marquez, tears streaming down her face, pulled them away, leading them into the dense underbrush where the anaconda couldn't follow. They escaped with their lives, but the horror of what happened haunted them as they navigated the jungle, desperate to find another way out. The giant anaconda, the guardian of Lago Oculto, had demonstrated the lethal reality behind the legends, a reminder that some places on Earth are still ruled by forces as ancient and untamed as the land itself. 
the memory of Louise's final scream would echo in their nightmares forever, a chilling testament to their harrowing encounter at the Hidden Lagoon. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 